Hello friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. For today's video, we are going to discuss about flanges. So, without further ado, let's get started quickly. A flange is a method of connecting pipes, walls, instruments and equipment to form a pipework system. It also provides easy access for maintenance, cleaning, inspection or modification. Flanges are usually welded or screwed into such systems and then joined with each other using bolts. We refer ASME B16.5 for flanges up to 24 inches and ASME B16.47 for above 24 inches flanges. Now, question arises, what are the different types of flanges available? So, let's see the classification of those. Based on type, we have different types of flanges like weld neck flange, slip on flange, socket welded flange, threaded flange, lap or stub end flange and blind flange. Based on type of facing, Flanges are classified into five ways. Raised face flange, flat face flange, ring type face flange, tongue and groove flange, male and female flange. Based on type of specialities, flanges are classified into six ways. That is long welding neck flange, expander flange, reducing flange, spectacle blind, spade or fistful flange. Based on type of class or rating, flanges are classified into seven ways. 150, 300, 400, 600, 900, 1500, and 2500. Now, let's discuss some of these in detail. First, we're going to discuss about weld neck flanges. Welding neck flanges are easy to recognize at the long tapered hub that goes gradually over to the wall thickness from a pipe to or fitting. It is the first choice for critical piping with high pressure and temperature and are most preferred in severe cyclic condition and fatigue conditions, that is, the line subjected to expansion line. It also reduces turbulence and erosion inside the pipeline or fitting since the bores of both pipe and flange match from the inside diameter. The neck or hub has the vibration resistance capability. This flange is circumferentially welded to a pipe or a fitting with a single penetration. V butt weld at its neck and welded area can be easily examined by radiography. You can see the weld on your screens, yellow portion shows the weld. Next is slip on flange. This flange is slipped over the pipe and then fillet welded. Slip on flanges are easy to use in fabricated applications. The calculated strength from a slip-on flange under internal pressure is of the order of two-thirds that of welding neck flanges and their life under fatigue is about one-third that of the latter, so its life is shorter than the welding neck flanges. As per ASME boiler code, slip-on flange available can be used up to four inches. It has two fillet welds, one on the inside and other on the outside of the flange. The pipe is set to wall thickness of pipe plus 3 mm back from the face of the flange so that it will not damage the pipe. The combination of flange and elbow or flange and T is not possible because named fittings does not have a straight end that can slide in the slip-on flange. This flange is available up to 1500 class rating. It is used for utility services like water, air, etc. Slip-on flanges are not preferable in severe cyclic conditions and fatigue conditions, that is, the line subjected to expansion line. It is also not preferred for corrosive fluids, as the welding inside the flange comes in contact with the fluid. Now comes socket welded flange. Their static strength is equal to that of slip-on flanges, but their fatigue strength is 50% greater than the double welded slip-on flanges. These flanges are used for line size of 5 inches and below. Since it has only one welding, so it is not preferred for critical piping. Before welding, the pipe or tube shall be inserted into the socket to the maximum depth and then withdrawn approximately 1 by 16 inches that is around 1.6 mm away from the contact between end of the pipe and the shoulder of the socket. This is to reduce the residual stress at the root of the weld that could occur during solidification of the weld metal. Next on the line is threaded flanges. This flange is referred to as either threaded or screwed. It is used to connect other threaded components and is used for low pressure, non-critical applications. Moreover, it is used where welding is not allowed due to hazardous fluids. These flanges are used for line sizes of 2 inch and below. 
A threaded flange or fitting is not suitable for a pipe system with thin wall thickness because cutting thread on those pipes is not possible. Thus, pipes with greater wall thickness must be chosen with schedule 80 and above. Next is lap joint flange. Lap joint flanges have all the same common dimensions as any other flange with only difference that it does not have raised face. We will discuss about different faces of the flange in next few minutes. Till then, let's go back to lap joint face. These flanges are used in conjunction with the lap joint stub end which is butt welded to the pipe with the flange loose behind it. These flanges slip over the pipe and are not welded or otherwise fastened to it. These flanges are nearly identical to slip-on flanges. Their pressure holding ability is little, if any, better than that of slip-on flanges and the fatigue life for the assembly is only one tenth that of welding lap flanges. The lap joint is favored in low pressure applications because it is easily assembled and aligned. This flange is available up to 150 class rating and in a full size range, dimensions and dimensional tolerances are defined in the ASME B16.9 standard. It is used with stub and in alloy SS piping to reduce the cost. Lack of contact with the fluid in the pipe often permits the use of inexpensive carbon steel flanges with corrosion resistance pipe. In systems, which erode or corrode quickly, the flanges may be salvaged for reuse. Last one in this category is blind flange. This flange is used to blank off or close pipelines, walls and equipments. Blind flanges are manufactured without a bore so that it can also be used as an inspection cover. It is sometimes referred to as a blanking flange. Now let's discuss some special flanges which are used. First is long welding neck flange. Long welding neck flanges, abbreviated as LWN, are similar to a standard welding neck flange but the neck is considerably longer. This type is often used as a nozzle for a barrel or column. Next one is expander flange. Expander flanges is a welding neck type flange where the nominal size of the non-flanged end is larger than the nominal size of the flanged end. They can be used to either increase or decrease the size of a pipe size. They are usually used to increase the line size to the first or second size. This is an alternative to using a separate reducer and weld neck flange combination. The expander flange can be used to connect pipe to pumps, compressors and valves etc. Now comes reducing flange. Reducing flanges are suitable for changing the line sizes but should not be used in abrupt transition create undesirable turbulences like at pump connection. A reducing flange consists of a flange with one specific diameter and having bore of a different or smaller diameter. Except bore, the hub dimensions of the flange will have dimension of the larger pipe size. For example, this 3 inch flange will have the dimension of 3 inch, however bore size would be 2.5 inch or lesser. These flanges come in pair. Next in line are spectacle blind. Also known as figure 8 blind spectacle blinds are generally used to permanently separate pipe systems or just to connect with each other. Spectacle blind is a steel plate cut into two discs of a certain thickness. It has a design limit of up to 12 inches. The two discs are attached to each other by a section of steel similar to a nose piece of a pair of glasses. One of the discs is a solid plate and other is a ring whose inside diameter is equal to that of a flange. Spectacle blinds be applied in systems where regularly needs to be separated from other installations. Normally, a spectacle blind is mounted in the open position so that the flow through the pipe is possible. If the spectacle blind is rotated, that is, in the closed position, the pipe is blanked off and no flow is possible. Maintenance of a pipe system can be a reason to rotate the spectacle in the closed position. For ASME standard, we refer B16.48 for spectacle blinds. Now let's have a look at spade and spacer. Spades and ring spacers are basically the same as spectacle blinds except that both discs are not attached to each other. To prevent unnecessary weight to a flange connection, two separate parts that is spades will be chosen instead of a spectacle blind. These are to be used for line sizes from 14 inch and above. Depending on the flange size and the pressure class, spades can weigh hundreds of pounds. Last one in this category is orifice flange. We refer ASME B16.36 for these. 
Orifice flanges are used with orifice meters to measure the flow rate of fluid. Orifice flanges generally come with either raised face or RTJ that is ring type joint facings. Flanges are available in welding neck, slip on and threaded form. The range of orifice flanges covers all standard size ranges and all common flange materials. These flanges are typically supplied with two half inch NPT that is national by thread tappings in each flange. Now let's discuss the other category which is different types of flange faces. First one in this is flat face. It is preferred for 150 class rating piping. It is used for low pressure applications. It is mostly used for cast iron material system and full face gasket is typically used with these. Next one is raised face. It is the most commonly used flange face in process piping. It is used for high pressure applications. It is preferred for up to 900 class rating piping. Raised face thickness is 1 by 16 inches and is included in the flange thickness for 150 and 300 rating flanges. And for above 300 rating flanges, raised face thickness is 1 by 4 inches included in flange thickness. Gaskets used for raised face flanges is an inside bolt circle gasket that is IBC. Now comes ring type joint RTJ. The ring type joint flanges are typically used in high pressures of 100 to 200 bar for classes 600 to 1500 ratings and or high temperature surfaces above 800 degree Fahrenheit or 427 degree Celsius. The gasket is in the groove of the flange face and is of oval or octagonal shape. This is a method of ensuring leak-proof flange connection at high pressures. A metal ring is compressed into a hexagonal groove on the face of the flange to make the seal. This jointing method can be employed on weld neck, slip-on and blind flanges. Next one is tongue and groove flange that is TNG. These flanges come in a pair that is the tongue and the groove which must be matched. One flange face has a raised ring that is tongue machined in onto the flange face while the meeting flange that has matching depression that is groove machined onto its face. The tongue and groove flange face is used to avoid blowout of the gasket from the joint. It is preferred for up to 2500 rating class piping above 200 bar and used for M category fluids where gasket blowout is hazardous. These flanges are used near to the axmas tree. There is no requirement of gasket and it has good mechanical interlock. The last one in this category is male and female flanges. It is similar to that of tongue and groove face flange. These flanges also come in a pair which must be matched. One flange face has an area that extends below beyond the normal flange face that is male. The other flange or mating flange has matching depression female machined to its face. The female face is 3 by 16 inch deep, the male face is 1 by 4 inch high and both are smooth finished. Custom male and female facings are commonly found on the heat exchanger shell to channel and cover flanges. Extended face of male and female flanges are also available. Based on pressure rating or class, flanges are classified based on pressure ratings or class of 150, 300, 400, 600, 900, 1500, and 2500. Higher the rating, stronger is the flange. Different pressure ratings have different dimensions for same nominal pipe size. Different pressure rating flanges can't be joined together as they have different PCB, different number of bolts, and size of those bolt holes is also different. So that is it guys for today's video. Soon we will come back with another interesting topic so stay tuned till then. If you have any queries or doubts please write to us in the comment section below. Also please send us some love and like, share and subscribe. Also please click on that bell icon so that you can get all the notifications. Till next time bye bye take care.